At the end of my second retro collections for PS4 video, I said I'd probably be back with more of them, so here I am. If you've seen either of the previous two installments of this series, then you know how important I think these collections are, for preservation as well as just for convenience. So without going into that whole spiel again, I figure I'll just jump right in. Here are even more collections of retro games you can get right now on your PS4 and PS5, and in most cases on other platforms as well. Namco releasing collections of their retro games and arcade games goes pretty far back. I remember seeing them floating around back on the PS1, and usually they're pretty good, with a nice variety of well-known titles and some good obscure stuff. And these two volumes on the PS4 do a pretty good job in the same way. The emulation seems to be handled by M2 here, which is always a good sign. And as far as I can tell, it's pretty spot on. Volume 1 includes Galaxian, Xevious, Mappy, Dragon Buster, Pac-Man, Dig Dug, The Tower of Druaga, Sky Kid, Dragon Spirits, Splatterhouse Wanpaku Graffiti, and Pac-Man Championship Edition. The standout titles here to me are Galaxian, Pac-Man Championship, and of course, Xevious which on their own are worth the price of admission. I also really like that they included Dragon Spirit and Splatterhouse Wanpaku Graffiti as they're both really underrated games in my opinion. This Splatterhouse game in particular has been really overlooked for a long time here in the States given its lack of proper localization. So it's nice to see it finally emerge in a kind of mainstream way. That said, I'm a tad disappointed to see the NES version of Dragon Spirit here, and not the far superior Turbo Graphics or arcade versions. In fact, these two collections have a lot of NES versions of these games for some reason, and I think that kind of drags it down, knowing that there's so many superior versions out there of most of them. Volume 2 has Battle City, Pac Land, Dig Dug 2, Super Xevious, Galaga, Rolling Thunder, Mappy Land, Legacy of the Wizard, Dragon Buster 2, Mindel Palace, and Gapless. This volume doesn't have as strong a lineup as the first one, but I still think Rolling Thunder, Super Xevious, and Galaga make it worth getting, especially on sale, which it often is. Old school shooter fans should definitely purchase this one on site. Like a lot of these M2 developed collections, you have your choice of a few backgrounds, aspect ratios, a few save state slots per game, a rewind feature, and optional scan lines. You also have anti-aliasing, which basically just applies a slight blur to everything. It looks okay, but I think I've just grown to embrace hard pixels these days. Overall, these are a couple of decent collections that definitely represent these NES versions of the games well. I would have just liked a bit more. Some 16 or 32-bit games would have been nice to include. Manuals and bonus artwork are also missing, so it does feel a little bare bones in that way. But the games included are generally good choices, and that's what matters most, I think. This collection is a bit of an oddball one. ADK Damashi, Damashi, Katamari Damasi includes five SNK games that span across shooters, fighting games, and action games. Pretty typical SNK stuff with good graphics, good music, and very arcadey controls. If you've ever played a classic collection of SNK games, then you pretty much know what to expect here. It's actually a port of a collection from the PS2 to PS4, so the start and select buttons are mapped to the corresponding sides of the touchpad like most PS2 to PS4 ports are. So be warned, that takes a little getting used to. This is a great collection of games, with Aggressors of Dark Combat, a fighting game, Ninja Masters, another fighting game but with ninjas, Ninja Combat, a fairly standard side-scrolling action game, Ninja Commando, an excellent top-down vertically scrolling shooter, and Twinkle Star Sprites, which is one of those split-screen shooters where you try to make life harder on the other player by doing really well on your side. I'm not entirely sure of the specifics here, as it gets really chaotic really fast, but it's pretty fun and has two-player like the rest of the games on here. You can also adjust the screen size, background art, and use some very subtle scan lines that actually don't look too bad. Emulation is pretty good overall, but I did notice that this particular collection seems to produce a rather soft image, almost as if a mild bilinear filter has been placed on the whole game by default. It's not bad, but you might notice it, and it's not ideal. All in all, this is a pretty good taste of what ADK brought to the table for SNK, and thus it's a pretty good taste of what you could get on the Neo Geo in the early 90s. And it's often on sale on PSN, so definitely keep an eye out for it if you're into that. 
The Art of Fighting is a series I've just completely missed out on throughout its entirety. But from what I can tell, this is a great way to jump into the series, as it includes the Neo Geo versions of all three of these games. The games have highly detailed characters for the time, with a lot of animation and pretty good music. It stands out from the rather large SNK fighting game library a bit though, with a spirit gauge that can affect how strong your attacks are, taunts that can lower your opponent's spirit gauge, and this weird thing it does where it zooms in and out a lot. Which I don't really care for, but I can see how it probably seemed really cool back then. It also feels a little bit slower and more deliberate than many of the fighting games of the time, which is kind of interesting. The cast of characters is a bit on the generic side in my opinion, and the movesets don't contain anything particularly interesting, but overall these are some pretty decent fighting games that certainly show off how ahead of its time the Neo Geo was. It has similar visual options as the ADK collection, which is to say, not a lot. It doesn't have that softness of the ADK collection though thankfully. Not a bad collection, especially if you can grab it for a few bucks on sale, which it often is. Now this is how you do a retro collection. The Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection is absolutely loaded with content. Extensive historical concept art, trivia, behind the scenes stuff, which I love, soundtracks, character bios, and of course a total of 12 classic Street Fighter games, which are... Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting, Super Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter Alpha 2, Street Fighter Alpha 3, Street Fighter 3 New Generation, Street Fighter 3 Second Impact, and Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Now I know why it always felt like there was a new Street Fighter game coming out every day in the 90s. There was. My interest in Street Fighter has always been pretty casual. I've always been more of a Mortal Kombat or Tekken guy, but it's hard to not respect the awesome legacy that this series has created. And the way this collection lays it all out is perfect. It digs up all of the info that you would ever want to have in a collection like this and displays it well. Street Fighter games are known for their cool characters and outstanding music, and unlike a lot of the fighting games from the 90s, these have aged really well especially the ones that came out in the later half of the 90s that have a lot more animation and more CD quality music. These games are pretty tough though and really require you to know a lot of the moves by heart if you want to get anywhere. You can turn the difficulty down in the main menu if you want and just spam your way through them, but not me. I'll take my ass kicking like a man, thank you very much. Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter Alpha 3, and Street Fighter 3 Third Strike have online multiplayer enabled. Sadly, I wasn't able to find a match with any of them, so I'll just have to get my beatings from the CPU for now. There's also a really nice timeline that you can scroll through that documents all the major releases in the franchise's history, including the release of this collection. Very meta. Overall, I have no real complaints here. While you could always point to other games like X-Men vs. Street Fighter or the Street Fighter movie game being missing, I won't do that with this one. 12 games that span across a decade is a pretty good haul for one collection. I'd really like to see something like this done for Mortal Kombat one day. Before Raiden, there was Tiger Heli. Well, there was actually a bunch of games, but I've always felt like Tiger Heli in particular felt like a Raiden predecessor to me. So it's cool to see a collection of all the different versions of it brought together by the folks at M2 in this collection. They're not particularly amazing shooters, as there are similar games from that era with better graphics, better music, and more creative aesthetics, but there's just something about Tiger Heli and Twin Cobra that just feel like comfort food to me. I'm never not in the mood for them. There's no Western version of this collection yet, at least not that I could find, so I imported the Japanese one, and it doesn't seem to have much in the way of English text in the menus, but it doesn't really matter much. According to PlayAsia's description, this collection contains two versions of GetStar, the Famicom, PC Engine, and Mega Drive versions of Q Kyoku Tiger, the NES and Mega Drive versions of Twin Cobra, the Famicom and NES versions of Tiger Heli, as well as some arcade challenge mode variations. Unfortunately, it's not really clear on how you access all of that though. You only have the arcade versions of Kyo Kyoku Tiger and Tiger Heli available on the disc. Everything else is DLC, which is freely unlocked by using the code that comes with the game. Even though the DLC is also available for about a thousand yen separately if you log in with a Japanese account on PSN, which isn't a lot of money and that's not super hard to do, but I still find this really annoying. 
the game is a bit pricey as it is, and yet most of its content is behind a secondary paywall for those that might end up with it secondhand. <laughs> bright side, the games that are here, the multiple versions of them, and all the bells and whistles do add up to a pretty good collection. Tiger Heli and Kyo Kyoku Tiger, or Twin Cobra as it's known here in the West, are undeniably fun. Tiger Heli is the older one of the two, and it shows a bit with only one weapon type and fairly simple presentation. You can get little helis that fight alongside you and take a hit for you though. Twin Cobra is its follow-up that sports much better graphics and music, as well as multiple weapon types like standard shooters of that era did. The little helis are gone though, now oh, well. At their core, these are both really standard shmups though. You shoot the hell out of everything that moves and drop bombs to deal extra damage and or bail yourself out of a tight spot. The arcade versions gives you a bunch of information on the sides of the screen too, which is kind of cool, but also really distracting. As you might expect, I'm a bit of a sucker for the PC Engine versions of the games, but everything is nice. The arcade versions are probably the better versions, I guess, from a gameplay perspective with all of the extra vertical space to see things coming from further away, although it does make the sprites smaller. That, along with challenge mode variations that let you pick a stage and section of a stage to start on, make this a pretty fully featured collection in my view. You also have the typical screen size options and a soft blur and a few different levels of scan lines that can be applied. The scan lines look okay at their lowest level, but the blur is too much in my opinion. Yours may differ, of course. The game also includes two versions of Gitstar, aka Guardian, which kind of plays like Altered Beast in space, and it's a game. Not particularly good or bad, I guess. You punch and kick things and try not to die. The game case also includes a download code for Techie Pocky, which is a pretty fun game that kind of plays like Columns and Tetris had a baby. It's a neat game, but this and Get Star being included feel very random. I guess I'm always in favor of more content over less, but it feels weird. Since this collection is really hard to come by in the West physically, and it's on the pricier side when it does come up, I don't know if I recommend it generally, especially because of the fact that not everything is actually on the disc. But if you're a huge old school shooter fan like me, and you're sure the codes haven't been used in the copy you're buying, then it's definitely worth getting, as these games are a blast to play and are handled extremely well here. The Doom games have always been pretty easy to get a hold of on most platforms, especially in recent years. Even Doom 64 has a PS4 version now. Even though that particular game isn't included in the Doom Slayers collection, this is still probably the best way to get your hands on as many Doom games as possible with one purchase. The Doom Slayers collection includes Doom 1, 2, 3, and the 2016 reboot. It's really more of a bundle than a collection though, there's no main menu where you choose which game to play. It really just seems to be Doom 2016 on the disc, and a download code for 1, 2, and 3, which is a little unfortunate. I would have much preferred a true collection on the disc, but it's still a good value all in all. You can't go wrong with Doom. Even the somewhat more divisive Doom 3 is a lot of fun, I think. It feels like a product of its time a bit, with a lot of audio logs and a heavy-handed story, but it also pulls off the horror vibe really well, with a lot of real-time lighting and darkness that was very impressive at the time. The Doom games are ultimately about speed, over-the-top violence, and a little bit of level memorization, with a lot of these games being somewhat maze-like, especially the first two. 1 and 2 also have a handful of mods that you can enable to change things up, some of which are basically just totally different games, so that adds a lot of replayability. The first-person shooter genre has fallen off a bit in recent years, so I always appreciate modern releases of old good ones like these. It also includes some stickers for your DualShock 4 if you want to make it look like that, and a pretty rad little poster of a Revenant, which I think I'm going to frame and hang up. While I would have really preferred a proper collection on the disc that included Doom 64, as this is, I still recommend getting it if you're a fan of the Doom games and want a simple way to play the classics on your PS4 or PS5. I would just put the asterisk next to it, just like Tiger Heli, to make sure that you either buy it new or at least verify that the codes haven't been used yet, since that's how you get most of the content. Damage, 
This collection is pretty essential for all horror fans, and includes a remastered version of the remake of the original Resident Evil, and a remastered version of Resident Evil Zero, an immediate prequel to the original game. Both of these are excellent survival horror games, originally on the GameCube of all things, but are now accessible in full HD on basically every platform that can run them. It definitely seems nowadays most people prefer the over-the-shoulder style of the recent remakes and the first-person perspective of 7 and 8. And I really like those too, but I still think that the old-school fixed camera angles of the original games ultimately produce a scarier and more atmospheric experience. There's something about these games, especially the original, that just fills me with relentless dread and uneasiness, even though I've beaten them like 40 times. You can choose between the original tank controls and the more modern 3D style, but I think tank controls work best for fixed camera angles. You can also choose between an old school 4x3 aspect ratio for a more retro look, but I think the 16x9 one is better. And it's real 16x9, not a stretched out 4x3. As you probably know, these are truly iconic horror games that remain some of the best in the entire genre. They keep you on your toes and don't just rely on jump scares like so many modern horror games and movies do. If the older presentation and control style bothers you, I highly recommend pushing through that and giving them a real chance. Especially the remake of the original. It's a very faithful remake that recreates most of what worked in the original PS1 game, but with completely overhauled visuals, voice acting, and some nice lighting effects. Some parts of the game itself have been shuffled around too, like some monster and item locations, which doors are locked, some puzzles are new, and some old ones are now solved in slightly different ways. Even some of the hokier dialogue seems to have been switched out with arguably better written, but objectively better acted lines. For instance, instead of this... Stop it! Don't open that door! Now we have this. Jill, no. You don't want to go back out there. I actually kind of enjoy the infamously corny dialogue of the original, but I understand why they wanted to update some of that. My only complaint is that while the character models themselves are nice and sharp in what looks to be 1080p, for some reason it looks like the cutscenes were not re-rendered from their original versions, so they actually look a lot worse in comparison to the gameplay. Some of the background images seem to suffer from the same thing. It's not a huge deal, but it can be a little distracting. Resident Evil Zero more or less plays like the original. Fixed camera angles, the whole shebang. But it seems like they put a little more effort into the graphics here. The cutscenes and backgrounds look a lot sharper and more detailed than the remaster of the original for some reason. Which is odd because both games were made around the same time. The story is a bit wackier, but it does fit nicely into the narrative of the first game. And has a cool mechanic where you switch back and forth between two characters in real time. It's not amazing, but it's certainly a good Resident Evil game. Dare I say, it might be one of the more underrated ones. All in all, for the really low price you can usually find this collection for, I think these two games are easily worth it. If you're even remotely a fan of survival horror, then definitely grab it, especially if you haven't played one or either of them somehow. Grab my hand! <sighs> kind of like the Turrican games, but the original didn't really click with me too well on the Turbo Graphics, so I sort of ignored the series after that. There's just something about the level layouts that failed to keep my interest. Also, the complete lack of visual feedback when you take a hit is just weird. And it reminds me a lot of playing the original Shadow of the Beast, which suffered from a lot of the same stuff and is also very European. But also like that game, Turrican has a lot of cool music, a lot of explorability, and I can definitely see the appeal. Turrican Flashback has Turrican, Turrican 2, which is basically just more of the first game but with slightly better graphics and music, as well as Super Turrican from the SNES and Mega Turrican from the Mega Drive, or Genesis. I definitely prefer these latter two, and not just because they have better graphics and better music, they just seem to play better to me, and their level layouts make a little bit more sense. <laughs> Mega Turrican trades out the stationary laser thing for a grappling hook, which actually adds quite a bit to the game. Super Turrican feels like it's a little bit more in between the original two and Mega Turrican, with the slightly better controls and improved presentation of the 16-bit era, but more of the open-endedness of the originals. So I wouldn't be surprised if this one ended up being the favorite for most Turrican fans. 
It also probably has the best music in the whole series, at least as far as I can tell, which I know is saying a lot compared to the other games. <laughs> All four games are great overall, and have the trademark weirdness of the series with hidden areas, lots of cool weapons, and fun bosses. And of course, you can also do this. As a collection, I'd say it's pretty good. The games play, look, and sound fantastic, with extremely smooth scrolling and clean audio. The display options probably give you the best selection of things to mess with out of any of the other collections in this video, with a lot of options. And scalability for the aspect ratio, sharpness, scan line density, and even picture curvature to emulate various types of CRT screens. With all of this, I was a little surprised to see a complete lack of any fun history trivia or concept art that some of the other collections have, though. You can play them with cheats and a rewind feature if you want, but you won't get trophies. Or you can play them in their original intended way with trophies enabled. This is a little weird, but maybe hardcore Turrican fans want that, I don't know. With how hard to come by these games can be, and with how well they are handled here, Turrican Flashback is a pretty solid pickup. And of course, an ideal way to have all these games conveniently in one place. And that does it for that one. I still continue to be surprised with just how many solid retro collections are out there for the PS4. It's really been a surprisingly great generation for these. I mean, I've been able to fill three somewhat long videos with them so far, and I know for a fact there's plenty more out there, so I'm probably gonna end up making one, maybe two more of these eventually, especially with the Sonic Origins collection and the TMNT Kawabunga collection on the way. Anyway, while these collections are not the ideal or be-all end-all solution for game preservation generally, they are a solid step in the right direction. So I'm going to continue supporting them and talking about them, especially when they're done well. Thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing.